problem one says to us, a list of financial statement items follows. Our job is to indicate whether each item is found on the income statement, statement of owner's equity, or the balance sheet. Utilities expense. What is it? Income statement. A building. Balance sheet. What is a building? It's an asset. Owner's capital. Yep, it's, it ultimately goes over to the balance sheet. Net income. Correct. Because remember, it flows from the income statement over to the owner's equity section. Land. Asset. Balance sheet. Equipment. Balance sheet, it's an asset. Revenues. Accounts receivable, which is, what is it? Asset. Accounts payable. Rent expense. Withdrawals. Owner's equity. Fees earned. In, it's a revenue income statement. Yep. Cash. Balance sheet. Supplies. If it said supplies expense, what would it be? Wages expense. Guys, absolutely awesome. Good. Hey. Which of the statements relates to profitability? Income statement. A balance sheet shows your financial position. Assets, liabilities, equity. But profitability, did you earn money? You know, did you earn revenues or did you lose revenues? Is the income statement. Now, we're going to take a look at P2. P2 is really about helping us understand how the various financial statements are related to one another, okay? So one thing we know is in the income statement, our revenues minus our expenses give us what? Net income. But that net income figure ultimately flows over to the statement of owner's equity, doesn't it? So do you see on the statement of owner's equity, it shows us the beginning balance then it shows us withdrawals, and it shows us the ending balance. Can't we figure out from all that what the net income is? How much is the net income? 300, isn't it? 2,900 plus 300. Let me go back to here. 2,900 plus 300 minus 200 equals 3,000, don't they? So the first thing we have to do is solve for the, the variables we can. We know the net income is 300, so we're going to figure that out first in the statement of owner's equity. Then we're going to take that 300, and we know that's our net income, don't we? If we know then that that's our net income, can't we figure out our, our expenses? If our revenues are 1,100, and our net income is 300, what does that mean our expenses have to be? Don't they have to be 800? Perfect, guys. Now, let's go back and see where else we're at. Our balance sheet. What is it in our balance sheet? Um, our assets? Are forty six hundred. We need. Oops, I know. I want to go here. Our assets are. Oh, we don't know what our assets are. But we know what our liabilities are. They're sixteen hundred. 
We also know what our owner's capital is, don't we? 3,000. So assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. What is the combination of liabilities plus owner's equity? 4,600. So what does that mean our assets have to be? Does that make sense, guys? Do you see, do you see the purpose of this is to understand how all these financial statements are linked together? Make sense? Let's look at another one. It's always easy when you're doing it with someone. On this one, Okay, we're missing revenues, we're missing net income, but guys, do you see how we know the net income has to be 1600 here? So we know H has to be 1600. What does that make our revenues? It has to be 6800, doesn't it? Let's look at something else, guys. Our assets are 31,000. Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. What does that mean if our assets are 31,000, our liabilities and owner's capital have to be 31,000? What does that mean our owner's capital is? 26. So can't we, because we know that this is 26,000, can't we then put in our ending balance up here? Right? So if we know our beginning balance of 24.4, we know our net income of 1,600, what's our ending balance? Or excuse me, our withdrawals? That's what threw me out. I'm like, they don't always have to. Have. Does that make sense? Let's go to the next one. If our revenues are 240 and our net income is 80, what does that mean our expenses have to be? 160. If we know our net income is 80, we know N is 80, don't we? Okay? Then Okay. We know our owner's capital is 380. Can't we go to P and put in 380? So if our balance sheet at beginning owner's equity capital is 340 plus our income of 80 and we know our ending owner's capital is 380, what do our withdrawals have to be? 40. If we know our total liabilities in owner equity is 380 and our owner's capital is 380, what are our liabilities? Zero. Zero. And our assets have to be 380. Guys, this is a really important exercise because it really helps you see the relationship. Does that make sense? Do we want to do another one like this? Okay, let's go to P. P7. I want you guys to take a minute and try to do the set A on your own. I'm going to help you. If you do set A, I'm just looking at this because you can you in, can initially look at it and go, oh, I don't even know where to begin. But I'm going to tell you, go to the statement of, of owner's equity first. Okay? Go to the statement of owner's equity first.
You guys ready? Okay. So if we go to the statement of owner's equity first, what is it we can surmise? The net income. What is the net income? 70? 780. So if C is 70, 780, what is B? 780. Then we can figure out what A is, can't we? 1620. Now, if we know that the statement of owner's equity ending balance is 6180, what is E? 6180. If liabilities are 3200 and owner's capital is 6180, what does that make our total liabilities in owner's equity? 9300? 9380? What does that make our assets? Do you see how important it is to understand how it all links together? Awesome, guys. I want you to do B. Is this helpful? Yes. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. With B, I want you to start at the balance sheet. So, let me know when you're ready. So guys, if we look at the balance sheet and we know that total assets are 60,000, then what does that mean total liabilities and owner's equity need to be? 60,000. If we know that total liabilities are 10 and our total liabilities and owner's equity is 60, what does that mean our owner's capital needs to be? 50. If K is 50, what's J? 50. Because we know 
the owner's capital ending balance, we can figure out the withdrawals, can't we? What are withdrawals? Good. Now, the statement of owner's equity shows us what the net income is. So if net income is 3200 what is H? 3200 What does that make our revenues? Because net income, if it's 3200 then our expenses are 10 That means our revenues have to be 13200 Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Is this helping, guys? <laughs> okay. Now, if we look at set C, we should be able to figure out our income statement right away. And f that income statement, remember revenues, minus M equals the net income of 296. So won't we be able to figure out that our expenses are 184. If we know that net income is 296, what is N? 296. If, if we look at our balance sheet, it tells us our owner's capital is 560. What does that mean P is? 560. 560. So do you see our owner's statement of owner's equity had a lot of blanks in there? But we can get the net income from the income statement. We could find out our total ending balance from the balance sheet. So what's left? Just our withdrawals. Perfect. Our balance sheet tells us our total liabilities plus owner's equity is 1160. What does that mean our assets are? Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. Does that make sense? If our owner's capital is 560 and we know our total liabilities and owner's equity is 1160, what does that mean our liabilities need to be? Perfect. No, our owner's capital is 560, 600. How are you doing? Is it good? Okay, next. We're going back to P3. Okay? P3 <laughs> says, Fuel Designs Financial Accounts Follow. Gives us all these accounts. We have to prepare an income statement, then we'll prepare a statement of owner's equity, and then a balance sheet. Okay? So, the most important thing is to determine where everything goes. Accounts payable is what kind of, on what statement? On the balance sheet is a liability. Accounts receivable is on the balance sheet as an asset. Cash balance sheet. Commission sales revenue, income. Commissions expense, commissions payable, balance sheet. Equipment, asset, marketing, expense, office rent, expense, owner's capital, December 31st, 2013, and, and, oh, sorry, owner's equity, because that's December 2013, sorry, supplies, supplies, expense, Telephone and computer expenses, 
wages, expense, withdrawals. Quit yawning. No, it, I'm so giving you a hard time. That's the problem. It's contagious. So the first thing we want to do is a, an income statement. Look at the formula in your book and model after it. We start with revenues, we list our expenses, total the expenses, and then we have either net, in net in income or net loss. The only thing on that statement is going to be revenues and expenses. Make sense? Once we come up with this net income, we're going to use it again, aren't we? We need that figure because what does it do to our owner's equity? It increases it, doesn't it? So we know we start, it told us the beginning balance of our owner's capital. We add our net income, which we get from the balance sheet. Or we get from the income statement. It told us our withdrawals, didn't it? So we then determine what our owner's capital is at the end of the year, 110.5, don't we? This owner's capital of 110.5, where's that going to go? Correct. So as we move down to the balance sheet, this figure is transferred from our owner's equity statement, the 110.5. Everything else was given to us. We lump our assets of 136.8, and our assets of 136.8 have to equal our liabilities plus our owner's equity. Does that make sense, guys? Do you see it really is logical? It really does make sense? It's logical. Let's look at P4. We're doing the same thing again, aren't we? P4, we're given all of these accounts, and we need to prepare an income statement, statement of owner's equity, and a balance sheet. Now, the A. Francis capital of 5,000 is letting us know this was the first year of operation. So the beginning balance is zero, and the investment into this business, or the first investment, is that 5000 right? OK? And we know whenever it says expense, that's going to be on the income statement. We know any payable or receivable is on the balance sheet. So if we go back here, guys, first thing we're going to do is the income statement. Once we show our revenues minus our expenses, our net income is going to be used for what? To flow to the owner's equity. Because it was a brand new business, A. Francis Capital started with zero. We added investments of five, net income of five. There were zero withdrawals. Okay, so our ending balance is 6,600. What do we need to do with that ending balance? Bring it down to the balance sheet. Okay, do you see how our cash and our receivables and our supplies are our 27.3? We've got two types of accounts payable. Do you see here, Melissa, how our big lump is liabilities? And under liabilities, we show accounts payable and salaries payable. Just like our big lump here, or our big um, subject is assets, and we break them down. So our total liabilities are twenty thousand seven hundred. Our capital is sixty six hundred. Therefore, our equity and owners liability and owners equity is twenty seven three. Y'all feeling pretty good? That is really the crux of this chapter. That's it. Those of you who are here, 
I'm going to show you something.